Good morning, folks. After yesterday's pop at the bright active region, the sun calmed down while the solar wind got the jitters. Today we've got Earth, solar, and space science news here starting at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last day on our star in 193 angstroms of light showing ionized iron. And indeed, after the pop yesterday, things got calmer. We watched for a CME all day on SOHO, but as we mentioned was possible, didn't even make it out of the corona, will not affect our planet. Meanwhile, the solar wind bunched up into itself for a hugely dense patch in the stream, but which actually took place during the low point of solar wind speed before coming back up this morning. That density was slow bunched up particles and there's absolutely no geomagnetic disturbance from such structures in the solar wind. But this brings up a point, as many are asking, at what level does the sun get scary and how Earth's weakening magnetic field plays a role? Folks, we're only down 20 to 30% so far. Yes, it is accelerating and continuing, but Earth has taken impacts from X10 solar flares before. And this coming cycle, something like a smaller X-class or M-class flare, it's just not going to be too scary. But if we get a bunch of them, or we hit X10, or there are multiple CMEs from filament releases directly at Earth that impact in succession, that's when we worry. We won't miss such a thing or avoid telling you about it. Don't let imagination, fear, and bad YouTube channels trick you. And we're off to the weather, where the West Coast waterworks will wildly wet a wide way up and down the seaboard. Gonna wiggle down close to Southern California again, too. Bit of a positive note for Australia, as it appears the cloud line across the southeast is planning to drop rain on various portions of the bushfire-affected area. Good news in general, but burn scar landslides are a concern. Let's come back to the sun for a moment and discuss its modeling of eruptions. This preprint has not undergone the final Chinese to English cleanup, but you can understand it just fine. And it's a top team from there confirming the electromagnetic triggering of solar flares by electromagnetic activity and conditions on the sun. Not only should these one day help forecast solar flares, but the more we look into a strictly magnetic triggering, the bigger the sun's maximum blast could theoretically be. Speaking of blasts, couldn't believe this when I saw it, so most of the gold on Earth is atomized and spread around the world and the oceans. They say that not only is copper deeper while gold is found closer to the surface, which you know if you know porphyries or have ever worked with NI43101 reports, but 95% of the gold is lost to eruptive emissions in the atmosphere, which means that when they mine gold, 20 times more than what they got went up into the sky. Moving on to an event that takes place today, you can attend online or in person. Woods Hole scientists to give a briefing on climate matters, and I am very curious to know if they have an update on the Beaufort Gyre. Plus, they want to talk mitigation strategies, so I'm curious if they are for or against playing God in the sky. Up next, folks, Sprite Lightning where the global electric circuit surge of the flash sends an overdensity through the current that breaks out of the ionosphere. They are finding that a ton of not water is produced by those blasts. Careful not to read that as H2O. But these radicals and exotic chemistries are produced here by the electromagnetic components of the sprite or the corresponding terrestrial gamma flash, just like cosmic rays and UV light help to break apart and recombine materials throughout the atmosphere. It's one of the items tracked by the new GOES instruments. You'll recall we showed their full suite of atmospheric chemistry capabilities here, and if you missed this the first time we put it up, aren't you glad it made its way back again? Yeah, me too. But now we're going to go to some more complex space science news, but we'll ease our way in with a very pretty shot of Mars polar dust storms. Streams coming off the isolated exposed patches reveal the strength of that wind and also its electrostatic potential. So let's talk gamma ray bursts. Scientists from Warwick making a titanic claim, saying all gamma ray bursts occur at binary stars, that you must have a partner to make that release. While I am not at all suggesting that that would not be a valid solution to get one, to say it's the only one means that for the gamma ray burst seen almost daily now, each will be a bit of a nail biter and they're hoping it doesn't debunk their idea. At least kudos for the guts to be bold. Top two stories go together and it's all about the dust. By studying dust found inside one of the oldest meteor fragments on Earth, they found some of the dust had formed way before our entire solar system. They were relics from the previous generation of stars and their nova. Now first, this is not exactly what I call a narrow range of certainty here. 1.5 million to 3 billion years older than the solar system? 
Well, I suppose I can forgive the lack of precision, because that's up to three times longer than dust is supposed to be able to survive in the interstellar medium. And if that dust is much older and it can linger longer than they thought, then uh-oh, that means there's a ton of dust that they thought was gone and broken apart that is actually still there, and has been acting on the galaxies and clusters and the light we're trying to see from deep space. Oh, and hiding the ions and electric current nearby, just like happened with Cassini at Enceladus. And so last but not least, let's add to that cosmological conundrum the fact that they're almost certain that far infrared returns are underestimated, and that very early star formation rates are underestimated, and that both of those hint at there being more dust produced early on, which can then last much longer than they've expected, messing up their entire view of how the universe came to where it is now not to mention hiding much more ions and electric current along the way. Now luckily for you, a bunch of professors and the first allowed release of previously classified information is found in our Plasma Cosmology movie. We were very lucky to be able to do so. It is linked below with our other movies to help you catch up quickly and join the tsunami of observers. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. Of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.